what kind of tone do you hope to hear from Lai Qingde? It was obviously a very heated campaign between three parties. You were one of the three parties as well as the vice president candidate. Is there a tone that he can strike to kind of bring Taiwan together at a time of polarization? I think bringing Taiwan together is definitely going to be a key message because there's no other way he could be um, pushing for any of the reforms he's to seek because um, the DPP is in a slightly weakened position with only 51 seats in legislature. So um, I hope it's a message of um, consensus building and um, bringing Taiwan together at a time when there's a lot of global upheaval but also many domestic challenges as well. Do you think that Polarization in Parliament, though, can kind of weaken his mandate on all the big issues that the President of Taiwan has to do, including cross-strait relations. Absolutely. I think it will be a difficult negotiating process for this new President um, as he's trying to navigate. It will be very different from President Tsai Ing-wen, where she had majority of the House. Yes. So what priorities would you like to hear from him? You took on sort of a, a platform of some of the economic issues and reform as well, mm -hmm. whether it's pension reform, but also some issues with the bills that you initiated when you were a member of parliament, 17 bills, I believe, mm -hmm. including a sovereign wealth fund, which you proposed for Taiwan to use its uh, a portion of the more than $500 billion in FX reserves that Taiwan has to put it at play and also win more influence abroad mm -hmm. with that money, right? Yes. So what, what kind of priorities on the economic front would you really spearheaded? Would you like to see the ruling DPP take up? Mm -hmm. I think in terms of this government's KPI, as I like to call it, from, because I come originally from private sector, key performance indicators, I would love to see more focus on foreign direct investment and um, efforts for international connectivity, including the Sovereign Wealth Fund. And so also, um, for example, one of the initiatives of mine, uh, global minimum tax. Because right now, Taiwan hasn't joined the league of this um, new tax reform that would make us much allow time to facilitate to become um, one of the regional hubs here in Asia, whether it's for supply chain or if it's for um, tax purposes. And in the world where it's China plus one, Taiwan plus one, Taiwan needs to accelerate change to create more jobs because after all, we can't only be known for semiconductors. And the bottom line is 60% of our economy is actually in the service sector. And so um, I, the ongoing um, concern for the average citizen would be around housing, affordable housing, yeah. around um, inflation, and the fact putting in um, an average citizen's view is the cost just go up and up. Yeah. And my salary has not increased at all. Yeah. So um, I think all of the legislators across all parties would also have to focus on that. And I think a couple of other issues, including um, industry concerns. So 2025, Taiwan also will have um, uh, the third plant of our nuclear power plant be phased out. Yeah, you say Lai needs to address this pretty quickly. Yes. He the needs energy to, mix. Energy mix. And it's an issue that AmCham and ECCT, the American and European Chambers of Commerce, have mentioned again and again. And so, again, um, when I talked about international connectivity, it's about Taiwan's competitiveness, creating more jobs, securing our economy, and safeguarding our citizens' future. We'll need to get industry enough of a en stable energy supply. Yeah. So this nuclear issue needs to be focused on. I mean, the world is not ta now talking about hydro and nuclear. And Taiwan's Thai power, our state-owned power company, yeah. is 80 percent fossil fuels. Um, LNG and also coal. So that's something that really needs to be uh, addressed. And finally, I think around our aging population, because I come from the insurance industry originally, yeah. 2025 is when Taiwan will meet the super aged economy, which means that 20% of our 23 million people will be over 65 years old. And so what it means is so that pension reform, pension reform. But I'm happy to say that it's one thing that I think um, President Lai can harvest rather quickly um, because when I was co-chair of the Health, Environment and Labor Committee last autumn, shortly before I became VP um, candidate for TPP, um, there's been, um, I chaired a session around pension reform and there seems to be a huge consensus already, crossbench, around increasing defined contribution opportunities. And so that could be quickly done and again to secure the 
um, pension future of our, our country. And 2028 is when our labor pension will go bankrupt as well. So those are the issues that he would be faced with right away. F fairly quickly, on mm -hmm. the sovereign wealth fund, since mm -hmm. we're talking about a big pile of money here, one of the largest mm -hmm. pools of... Fourth largest Fourth largest, world. absolutely. Born and reserve. I, from my understanding, is you got about 64 of the uh, support from 64 yes. members of, of the legislative yuan out of the 113. Where does it go from here? You're no longer in the legislative yuan. And there are eight seats now of your party compared to 53 by KMT, 52 by DPP. Can they pick it up and move it forward to reality? I'm very excited to say that both KMT and TPP have put forth my original bill again to the table, which is actually amending two articles of the Central Bank Act. And that would allow for 10% of its 570 billion US dollars to be put aside for a sovereign wealth fund for purely foreign investments. And again, that will help with Taiwan's interconnectivity and be engaged with other economies and to earn, you know, um, have better returns because right now our central bank's return is uh, below sure. inflation. Absolutely. <laughs> very, very quickly, mm -hmm. what are your political ambitions? What's next for you? Are you going to run for legislative yuan again? Will you put yourself on another ticket if you're asked um, down the road? I think everything is up for, for discussion. But for the moment, I'm very happy to meet with legislators across bench at the moment to discuss various bills on the topics I've mentioned around carbon tax, global minimum tax, sovereign wealth fund, pension reform, and the like.